Rarely do I have the opportunity to experience something new in video games, something that takes me by surprise, that leaves me genuinely speechless. Wait, Larry, why are you showing them the clip where I died? No, it isn't funny. I don't care if you think it is. Hey, my name is Styx, and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you're interested in games like this, then I urge you to go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. That way you'll always know whenever I go live with new videos. Today, we are going to take a look at a brand new top-down roguelike action shooter called Anvil Vault Breakers. The devs actually reached out to both Mrs. Six and I, offering to sponsor a look at it by providing us early access to the game. So if you're interested in trying this game out for yourself, if this game looks at all interesting to you, then I urge you to go ahead and click that link in the description in the pinned comment below to be taken directly to it. Before we dive into what Anvil is though, I just wanna say, what an absolutely chaotic experience this has been thus far. I have never played a roguelike action shooter before. They're a part of the genre that I just never really found myself playing. I'm an RPG guy, I love my RPGs, but I can nevertheless appreciate the intricacies of other genres, despite my inexperience within them. Now, Anvil Vault Breakers is a very interesting game from what I've played. You get to play as one of 12 different breakers. Jungler, Sandman, Lightning, Liner, Guillotine, Mountain, Rush, Toast. <laughs> wait, oh, wait, Toast? <laughs> uh, and oh, oh my God, he's even, he's even nice and brown. He's cooked <laughs> to perfection. Holy crap, that, that, is, that is actually, Amazing. Then we have the females, Elsa, Uzi, Shuri, and Bront. Each breaker utilizes different weapons, has access to unique abilities that can drastically alter the flow of battle. As an example, I played the breaker Elsa, and Mrs. Sticks played the breaker Guillotine. Elsa utilizes an ice ability that could freeze enemies in place, and she could also summon a giant worm that would that that would slither around, you know, doing whatever worms do. I don't know, what do worms do? Put put holes in fruit? How How is putting holes in fruit a useful ability, Larry? What would throwing a holy fruit at a giant mechanical arachnid do? Exactly. While playing through the various different maps, you will encounter a means with which to upgrade your character. I could pursue various different paths by spending currency obtained while exploring. This would give me various different options. As an example, they would allow for me to increase my maximum HP, my defense or attack stats, or more drastically, they would change my entire playstyle. I could enhance my freeze ability to make it heal a set percentage when used on both myself and allies or I could put passive regens on my worm, or I could actually spec into having two separate worms. I'm not kidding, the unique synergy between you and the other breakers makes for a lot of potential possible unit combinations. Going beyond that, you have the option of customizing your breaker via relics, weapons, and out of mission skill upgrades. These are permanent, whereas the upgrades that you purchase while playing through the missions are temporary and reset after the successful completion of each galaxy. Galaxies act as levels, or as chapters. Each galaxy has a set number of different maps that you'll play through with varying different environments environments, forests, wastelands, frozen tundras, each have their own unique monsters, and half the levels are full-scale boss fights, which isn't, I do hate to admit this, where I died more than once. Interestingly enough, Mrs. Sticks only died once in our several hours of playing the game, but I like to attribute that to the fact that she was playing more of a tank character where I was playing a glass cannon mage. If that isn't a deep enough form of customization, then they go even further by providing you a type of talent tree system. Elsa had an offensive, a defensive, and a strategic tree. I had options that could increase the damage of my weapons, my base HP, my movement speed. There are legitimately so many tiny little options to customize your character into something substantially different to anyone else. That's a type of depth that I can get behind. Even if, at times, 
I'm not gonna say this happens all that frequently, but at times I end up not really putting any forethought into the builds I end up using and then ultimately end up underperforming a little bit. But I'm the kind of person that likes to just go into things blind. I like just smacking into whatever provides the biggest explosions, the flashiest of effects for me. I don't know, I feel like, <sighs> I'm an easy guy. If I can spec into something that has massive explosions, then at the end of the day, I'm happy. Oh, and did I mention there were different skins that you could unlock as well? Oh yeah, every breaker has their own selection of skins. Mrs. Dix just got lucky and happened to unlock a breaker with arguably the best skin in the game right now. The bulk of the game, however, takes place on various different planets. You'll deploy your breaker or your breakers if you're choosing to play cooperatively like Mrs. Sticks and I did, and hack, slash, and blast your way through waves of enemies that spawn across the map. The combat is fast, it's fluid, and more than that, it actually looks pretty damn good. Again, this is not a genre that I typically dabble in, so I was genuinely surprised by what I'd experienced. Admittedly, I do regret not playing as Guillotine myself, as opposed to Elsa, because I'm more of a melee player than I am an archer or a gunslinger. Working together was an integral part of successfully completing maps though, especially boss encounters. I would unleash a barrage of abilities at range, while Mrs. Stakes would unload all of her pent up anger and frustration onto them. In essence, she tanked while I spanked and kept her alive via heals because that was the build I chose as I hated dying as often as I did, which was like twice at max. This worked exceptionally well against boss encounters though, as even with her superior tanking abilities, she melted like butter over an open flame. I dare say I don't think I could have progressed as far as we ultimately ended up progressing though if she was not there right beside me. Now, overall, Mrs. Sticks and I had some fun plowing through a variety of different worlds out of the two galaxies that we managed to unlock and play through. The futuristic graphical style really sold us on the setting and the abilities looked fantastic. The combat was engaging and there was a depth to it that I honestly didn't expect. It's currently in early access, so I'm sure there will continue to be alterations made to the game over the coming months. Speaking of, March actually brings with it a brand new season that will feature the new Journey game mode along with an additional breaker. So, if raining down sweet, sweet destruction upon aliens sounds like fun, either solo or with friends, I, once again, urge you to go ahead and click that link in the description and the pinned comment below. You might end up really enjoying yourself, who knows?